Sarah, then the Margaret will be five, uh, five fifty seven. So this is time the Margaret. Near to this is near to Margaret. Uh, so that means four fifty seven. Uh, your time. Uh, there will be Margaret in uh, Sarah uh, Sabah. Oh, so in in Kota, uh, I mean Sabah so Sabah is one one hour earlier than Semenanjung Peninsula. Oh, so uh, how about this this the uh, lecturing? So you can uh, you stop it when there is Margaret time? Yes, yes. Um, maybe uh, I'll try to finish early. Mm -hmm. So five. Uh, now it's uh, we will start at five thirty. Okay. So okay. perhaps at uh six ten my time. Okay. Six ten. Can can I can I stop at six ten? Can I uh, complete my class by 40 minutes? 40 minutes, okay. Sure. Okay, yeah. All right, okay. Okay, thank you. So uh, so we can start today uh, now. Okay. Uh, so um is there any other docent in the in the in the mm, no, wait, wait, wait. I will check. First, <laughs> there is uh, another just to say or... hi. Uh just to say hi if, if there's any. Um, maybe not. Maybe you are and me, uh, you and me, just uh, in this Zoom meeting. So, uh, okay. to all the students, please uh, open your camera because the guest lecturing will be start. To all the students, please please open your camera because we have to start today. So, uh, right. we can start, and I will be uh giving uh some maybe two minutes uh, introduction for uh, our lectures okay sure okay to all the students please start your video because we have to have the guest lecture today to all the students i remind you to all the students sofia cindy raina maybe you have to join this you have to open the camera salsa Bila, sarah Cindy M, Alexander Agung. To all the students, please open your camera because it's so important for you about the constitutional law. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, all to all the participants. Welcome to guest lecture. I'm Siti Hairunisa. It's my pleasure to be host today for this session. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to greet to our speaker, Ms. Uh, Associate of Dr. Nora Zelina Binti Abdul Aziz. Binti Abdul Aziz. Before we begin, uh, I would I have a few some housekeeping notes. If you have any question for the presenter, please use the chat box. Please type them into the question box in our Zoom. If you are not asking question, please keep yourself mute during the uh the lecturing. So first of all, I would like to introduce uh, briefly to our guest speaker, Dr. Nora Zelina Binti Abdul Aziz, Bachelor of Laws. We, we get the Master of Laws, LLM National University of Malaysia in 2002. And Master's thesis with the Bio. So uh, please mute your, 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 your voice. To all the students, please mute all of your voice. Please open your camera. If you're not camera, I will be uh turn on your camera. So please turn on your camera before we I'll uh, return your camera to. All right. So please uh, mute your 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 speaker. Okay, I will be continue. First, um. I mean, uh, master thesis is Biotika dalam Pendermaan Organ Kajian di Malaysia, Jepun and India. PhD in Law International Islamic, he get a PhD in Inter Law International Islamic University, IAUM in 2017, with the thesis, The Need for Legal and Administration Framework Governing the Halal Pharmaceuticals Industry in Malaysia. His uh, expertise area, constitutional law, consumer law, law of contract, halal related the law, medical, legal, women, and child law. So you are uh, specific in child law too, miss? Uh, yes, Dr. yes. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay, I'm the specific one, the the, the women and child in the protection I law. see. So perhaps we can uh, conduct a research together? Okay. You sure. <laughs> 
will be uh, maybe in uh, in the next research we will be uh, yeah or we can start with writing join. papers and publish yeah join research uh, uh, I will yeah, be calling you be because I have okay. your contact sure sure <laughs> okay uh, so many uh, uh, many supergraduate uh, postgraduate supervisions I cannot mention why one by one because many uh, many researchers that he will be uh, in out in our data uh, so I I just mentioned one uh, he has been teaching at the Faculty of Law University Technology Mara UITM since January 2002 and current destination is a senior lecturer and you uh Doctor, Miss Doctor Noraliza Abdul Aziz, already associate prof. Yeah, prof. Um, uh, in the process, but not confirmed okay. yet. <laughs> okay. Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, uh inshallah, will be in, uh, in next year. I yeah, think. inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and she's uh been guest speaker and lecturer in many university. Yeah, prof. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, lecture and Universitas Islam Bandung in two thousand eighteen. Uh, Mar marital rape in Malaysia in Pakistan for the radio talk and many things. And currently, he invited speaker international conference and research. Uh, and practice in science, science, technology, and social science. Here, halal healing embracing the Malaysia TCM within the Islamic guidelines. Be there's many journal article and cannot mention one by one so many so <laughs> there's more, many many research publication maybe one of them the latest one is uh revisiting legal framework on traditional commentary and um, article journal recently well many many i cannot mention one by one because but it's okay uh, and the last one <laughs> It's talking about the laboratory to the and issue for security and legal remedies in Malaysia and Thailand. And many books. Yes. This the masuk material. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh. So. So, Prof, we can start today. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Siti Khairun Nisa, nice meeting you again online. Hopefully that we can have the chance to meet a face to face. All right, and then a uh, very good day to everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening. I guess it's evening in, in your place. So it's evening here as well. I'm in Sabah, by the way. So let me just share the PowerPoint, yeah? Okay, can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, we can see it clearly. Okay, alhamdulillah. Now let me start, yeah? Now, let me just go to the first slide. All right, then present this one. All right, and today what I'm going to share with you is um, a, a brief introduction to the Malaysian government, but through the perspective of the constitution, right? Um, so the content of the lecture, it's going to be uh, around 40 minutes. So I'll be discussing and sharing with you, um, number one, on the principles of the basic structure of state. So the structure of the Malaysian government as a whole, and then the major governments and uh, how does it um, being described in our constitution, um, the powers, procedures, and the fundamental rights. But I think I'll be skipping on the fundamental rights yeah? because it does not really um, relate to the formations of the government, but the role of the government is to uphold the fundamental rights. So Malaysia, let us look at uh, what is Malaysia defined under our constitution. So like in Indonesia, you have Undang Dasar 1945, but for Malaysia, we achieved independence in 1957, and it has been described in our constitution that Malaysia consists of 13 states and one federal territories. So uh, if you can see uh, the one bold, um, Article 1, we, we call this one as Article 1. Yeah. So Article 1 of our constitution termed Malaysia as a federation known as Malaysia. right? And the states consist of, let us look on the map. So these are the maps. We have the 13 states. Uh, I believe that you know the his history of Malaysia. We used to be only on the peninsula side. So the peninsula side, if you can see on the map, 
consist of from the north, Perlis, Gedah, Penang, Perak, Selangor. Selangor is where I'm working, Shah Alam. Right, and then Negeri Sembilan Melaka, Johor, um, Pahang, Kelantan, Terengganu. Right, on on the right side uh, of the map, we have Sabah and Sarawak. So now I'm here from Sabah, the northern part of uh, the western part of Malaysia. Uh, so that, that that one comes later. That means Malaysia originally was only peninsula from 1957 to 1963. So in 1963, we combined with Sabah and Sarawak, and this is extended in our constitution. So now we become Malaysia, no longer Tanah Melayu. So it's uh, Malaysia consisting of the peninsula, Sabah and Sarawak. Right, as for the structure of the Malaysian government, Malaysian government stands on two main concepts. It has monarch, uh, unlike Indonesia. You still have monarch in part of your Yogyakarta, but uh, the monarch um, no longer has power in terms of the administrations of the countries. But as for the Malaysian monarch, they place a very important part on the administrations of Malaysia. But our monarch is a constitutional monarchy. That means the power is limited to the constitution. They are not absolute monarchy. They are unlike uh, the monarch that there is in Saudi Arabia. They are not like the monarchy that there is in Brunei. So Malaysian uh, monarch is controlled by the constitution. Okay. Besides that, uh, the monarch who is the head of the countries uh, is also assisted by our head of government, which is our prime minister. And the prime minister sits in the parliament. So it's parliamentary democracy. So based on these two concepts, Malaysia stands in terms of the constitutions. But if we were to um, identify uh, where is it in the constitution that is provided Malaysia is parliamentary democracy uh, featuring constitutional monarchy, there is no specific provision. But it is spelled out through principles that there is in the constitution, right? So this is one of the uh, excerpt that I've I've mentioned. So let's look into the first system through the perspective of the constitution. Malaysia has um a parliamentary democracy. So I think this is similar to Indonesia. Indonesia also adopts democracy, and your democracy system is um, reflected through your elections or you term that as uh, pemilu, pemilu or pe, pe, it's pemilu, yeah, election. So your elections, you elect your uh, president and also members of uh, council, eh, majlis perwakilan rakyat. Um, but for us, our election, uh, it will elect the head of the government who is the prime minister and the constitution says that our monarch, who is the young Depertuan Agong, will be appointing the prime minister. I will be discussing that afterwards. Yeah? So parliamentary democracy means basically the head of the government becomes the head of the government by voices of the people. And the voices of people is reflected through supports of majority. And that's why in Malaysia, the vote of confidence or support of majority is very important. If you have followed uh, what happens in Malaysia since COVID-19, you can see that we have transformed three times of the government. So in 2018, we have the government, uh, which was led by um, Tun Mahathir Muhammad. Tun Mahathir Muhammad is our seventh prime minister. Um, before that, he has been our Prime Minister, the fourth Prime Minister. But that um, government of Tun Mahathir Muhammad only lasted for uh, two years, nearly two years. And then it was replaced by another government. Uh, and then comes Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin as our eighth Prime Minister. And then uh, after one and a half year, um, we have another Prime Minister. So in five years, we have been changing government for three times. Uh, where finally now we have our 10th Prime Minister, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim. Why does that happen? 
because it is reflected through the parliamentary democracy in Malaysia that the one that can retain being the prime minister must be the one who command the support of majority. So all of the prime minister that have been changing in these five years, basically they do not have the support of majority. Either they lose the support of majority by party hopping or sometimes by external factors. Right. So this is the diagram how I explain um, the concept of our uh, of, of my state. Yeah? So the parliamentary system, we have voters that elect members in the legislative branch. To be specific, it's not both um, the one in legislative branch. Eh? In our legislative branch are also known as parliament. We have the one rakyat and the one negara. So for the people, they only elect people or their, their representative to day one rakyat. Um, and the voices of the day one rakyat will determine who can be appointed as the prime minister through their support of majority. So for your uh, information, in the day one rakyat, we have 222 members. So we apply simple majority. Simple majority, that means uh, the party that wants to be the government needs to secure at least 112 seats in Day One Rakyat only. Because Day One Negara, we have 70 members. But the votes of Day One Negara doesn't count in appointment of the Prime Minister. What matters is the vote or the support coming from members in Day One Rakyat. So as in Day One Rakyat, we have 222 seats. That seat is represented by a person that we elected. So the counting of simple majority must meet at least 112 seats. More, better. Right. As for the history of Malaysia, it has always, always been um, not two-third majority, but... Um, the Prime Minister managed to secure more than simple majority. Right now, let's let's look at some of the characteristics of parliamentary democracy. Um, under our article constitution, Article 43 2A, it states that the young de Agong must first formation of the government, yeah. It was stated under Article 43 2A uh, that the young de Agong must first, after election, appoints the Prime Minister. Why? Because the Prime Minister will be advising our monarch or also known as the Yang de Pratuan Agong to appoint the other Cabinet Minister. So the Cabinet Minister comes after appointment of the Prime Minister. So the formations of government as a whole, we start with appointment of the Prime Minister plus appointment of the uh, Cabinet member. So the formulations of both forms a government. But to do that, the one who can appoint either the Prime Minister or the Cabinet member is our Yang de Pratuan Agong. And the Yang de Pratuan Agong has discretionary power to appoint our Prime Minister. Discretionary power meaning that he need not act on advice. Nobody shall advise him who can be appointed as the Prime Minister. So how does our uh, how does our majest Majesty or Yang de Pratuan Agong appoint the Prime Minister? He must satisfy himself that the one he wants to appoint as the Prime Minister has secured the support of majority of the member in House of Representative or Dewan Rakyat. Right after appointing the Prime Minister, then the Prime Minister will be formulating the list of names in the cabinet. What happened in Malaysia is that the Prime Minister will be suggesting someone from their team. The problem is sometimes the cabinet member that he wants to be in the team loses in the elections. So they do not have a seat in the one riot. But if the Prime Minister insists that he wants the person from his team who loses in the election, to be part of the cabinet member, what he can do is 
he can suggest to the Yang Dipertuan Agong to appoint that member as member of Dewan Negara. Remember, I, I mentioned uh, we have another Dewan in our parliament, which is Dewan Negara. So Dewan Negara, the person who holds position in Dewan Negara, does not become member in Dewan Negara by elections, but they become member of Dewan Negara by appointment of the Yang Dipertuan Agong. So appoint him in Dewan Negara, then our Prime Minister will be suggesting to the Yang Dipertuan Agong to appoint him as cabinet member. So that will be one way of appointing cabinet member that belongs to the team similar to the team of the Prime Minister. Right? So as for um, the dismissal of the Prime Minister, there is no specific provision on the dismissal of our Prime Minister. But upon losing support of majority, okay, let me demonstrate this one. For example, um, the current Prime Minister of Malaysia demands a support of 112 member in Dewan Rakyat. So that qualifies him to be the Prime Minister. So the Yang Dipertuan Agong must appoint him to be the Prime Minister because he had met the criteria of becoming the Prime Minister, which is he commands the support of member in Dewan Rakyat. However, if um, the member of Dewan Rakyat signs a petition saying that they no longer support the current Prime Minister and the petition is more than simple majority, that means let's say 115 members in Dewan Rakyat signs a petition, submit to Yang Dipertuan Agong, stating that they no longer support the current Prime Minister. So now the Yang Dipertuan Agong, our monarch, will have the authority to dismiss the Prime Minister and replace him with another person. Uh, can, can you follow? Okay, so far okay, yeah? Okay, let's, let's look at our, uh, uh, okay, we've done with parliamentary democracy. So the nucleus, the core to parliamentary democracy is uh, the confidence, the support of majority. Yeah? Next, we are going to go into the constitutional monarchy, another bigger part on the formations of the government, looking into, uh, okay. Oh, sorry. I think I I used to record this one. Okay, let me just end this one. All right. Okay, now um, our young Dipertuan Agong has two power, basically discretionary power and non-discretionary power. Discretionary power that means young Dipertuan Agong has prerogative powers, so nobody can advise him in exercising the functions under discretionary power. He acts on his own but must be guided by our constitution. And through this power that he appoints the prime minister. Okay, the second part is non-discretionary power. Non-discretionary power meaning our young Dipertuan Agong must act on advice. So to act without the advice of the person stated in the constitution, the act of the young Dipertuan Agong, young Dipertuan Agong can be challenged. Right? Right, these are some of the functions on the non-discretionary power uh, to appoint the cabinet member, as I've mentioned. So the government is formed major uh, majority on the formations of the cabinet. So each member of the cabinet is appointed by the Yang Dipertuan Agong. As for now, the current system that we have, we have one prime minister and two deputy prime minister. Why? Because we have a unity government. So we combine with two um, major parties that have secured the seats. And the total number of seats acquired by this unity government is 30 plus 97. So it's more than 112. Right? Uh, so discretionary power other than appointment of the prime minister. The Yang Dipertuan Agong also holds the prerogative power or discretionary power to dissolve our parliament. What happens after dissolutions of parliament? After dissolutions of parliament, uh, dissolutions of parliament, 
hopefully that all of you uh, are aware what is dissolutions of parliament. Uh, that means we do not have government. When we dissolve the government, when we dissolve the parliament, that means we do not have government. Although Ali Dewan Negara is still there, but parliament could not function. So when there is a dissolution of parliament, we have um, a committee terms of Surhan Jaya Pilihan Raya, the election commission. So election commission, as stated in the federal constitution, must conduct election in 60 days. So it is limited to 60 days only for the election commission to conduct election. Why do they have to conduct election? Because it upholds democracy in Malaysia. So to reflect democracy, that Malaysia practices democracy, similar to Indonesia, the people need to vote. Then only it, it says that the government is appointed by the people and not by His Majesty. Uh, so that one is something which is in line with the democracy system. So 60 days, there must be election, except if Malaysia is in the state of emergency, then it's okay to go more than 60 days. Then after election, the government needs to be formed within another 60 days. So in total, we have 120 days where Malaysia do not have government following dissolutions of parliament. And this dissolutions of parliament is stated under the discretionary power of the young Depertuan Agung, our monarch. Right. Uh, so these are some of the differences between UK and Malaysia because uh, Malaysia, the matters with Malaysia is that um, in interpretations of the formations of the government through constitution, um, the judges would always say that Malaysia adopts Westminster model. What is Westminster model? We used to be colonized by UK, British. So for that, our model of constitution is said to be the exact copy of what we have in UK, the Westminster model. So in the interpretations and in the formations of our government, our main challenges is that we have to map our local activities in politics to appoint the government to the UK way of appointing the government, which is not true because to a certain extent, Malaysia already has its own convention and culture of how we appoint our head of government and appoint our head of state. For example, I think Malaysia and Indonesia, we are similar. Our main religion is um, Islam, majority of us. So for that, we believe in the concept of khalifa, vicegerents, uh, that is khalifa. So for that, in appointment of the monarch and in the appointment of the prime minister, we have to map it through the concept of khalifa rather than the concept of queen that we have in British. Uh, so it will be different. And it does not suit it to the Malaysian constitution. Right, this and these are the ground where we can we can find some differences between uh, the concept of the government in UK and also the concept of government in Malaysia. Right, Malaysia have written constitution, unlike UK. UK have unwritten constitution. Indonesia is similar to Malaysia. We have written constitution. What is the benefit of having a written constitution? Constitution is the highest law of the land. It's the supreme law of the land. So the running of the power, the structure, the formations of the government must be in line with the supreme law of the land, which is the constitution. So anything which is done not in accordance to the constitution can be declared to be void or invalid or it's not enforceable. It can be challenged in court. But in UK, they do not have a written constitution. So for that matter, they do not have the supreme law of the land. So their system is different. So this is my contentions in few of the papers that I've write uh, stating that uh, in terms of the Malaysian practice, and conventions, we are different from UK. After all, we have been 
66 years independence um, from UK. All right, and that also applied to the supremacy of the constitution. And uh, for UK, they apply parliamentary democracy. That means in terms of parliament, and constitution, their parliament is higher than constitution. So when there are changes of government, they would change the constitution to meet uh, whatever that they prefer. But for Malaysia, our constitution is supreme. So no matter how many times the parliament changes, the parliament is still the supreme power. All right. This is uh, some of the, um, I think, criteria of written and unwritten constitution. Um, I think it's some of it I've mentioned just now. Uh, the written constitution, there are difficulties in terms of amendment to the constitution. So we can't right. simply amend the constitution. Um, there are specific ways of amending the constitutions, unlike the ordinary law. So ordinary law, it's simple. You draft a bill to amend uh, the ordinary laws and get it passed in parliament and the simple majority, then it will be revoked or amended. But for constitution, there are very comprehensive procedures. So for that, because our fundamental rights is stated in the constitution, it is more secured as compared to fundamental rights that are stated under the unwritten constitution because the unwritten constitution it's easily to amend so it's not secured let's say if you have a government and the government desires saying that the rights of life need to be limited so they amend the constitution this is what happened in uk because uk they um they adopt parliamentary supremacy. The parliament is more supreme. So the parliament would be changing the government, the constitution from time to time to meet their expectations and their preferences. Right. These are some of the constitutional supremacy and parliamentary supremacy to which some of it I have mentioned just now. Yeah. All right, appointment of the head of the state. Okay. For Malaysia, the head of the state is by rotations. So the one who have the discretionary power and then discretionary power, and the one that holds the main power on the formations of Malaysian government, uh, Yang de Pratuan Agong, or also we know, uh, we call them as our monarch, they are appointed five years times. So in five years, we'll be changing Yang de Pratuan Agong. The current Yang Di Pertuan Agong or our monarch is the 16th Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Last week, we have appointed another Yang Di Pertuan Agong, the 17th Yang Di Pertuan Agong. And he is to be our Yang Di Pertuan Agong starting 1st January 2024. That means the 16th Yang Di Pertuan Agong has, um, has, come, has come to the... Um, and uh, the deadline of he becoming the Yang Dipratuan Agong, which is for five years. Right? Uh, so it's on rotational basis. Um, we have a list in Malaysia, although we have 13 states, but only nine rulers is entitled to be appointed as the Yang Dipratuan Agong. Not all will have the chance. Uh, the TYT or Tuan Yang Terutama from, the, from Melaka, Penang, Sabah and Sarawak will not have the chance to be Yang Di Pertuan Agong. It's only the other nine states that will be appointed and they take, um, they, they rotate, yeah, they rotate among them to be Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Uh, we have that list in the federal constitution. It has been stated that only nine rulers can participate and nine rulers can be appointed as the Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Right? It's only five years. But, um, we have some of the history of Malaysia where our young the Pratuan Agong, um, they did not have the chance to serve five years. For example, our previous 15th young the Pratuan Agong only served as, uh, as of, I think, two years. The term is only two years because he decided to resign. All right, so um, conclusion. Uh, am I okay, uh, Dr. Siti Khairun Nisa, or am I too fast? Can I conclude now? 
And then we open for questions and answer, yeah? Okay, so for my conclusion is uh, our government cannot exercise authority unless it has and maintained by Dewan Rakyat. So under the, con the concept of constitutional monarchy and parliamentary democracy, Malaysia stands as a country that upholds the democracy where the monarch hold, uh, has the main power on the formations of the government, but the power is limited to our constitutions. So with that, I think I end my lecture. Uh, and now I open for questions and answer. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Nora Zelina. Uh, can yeah. I can uh, call you shortly because Nora Zelina is too long? Ina, Ina, they, they call me oh, Dr. Ina oh, here. <laughs> Dr. Ina, okay, Dr. Yeah, Ina. It's oh, Ina, yeah, Ina. I forgot from the conference, they call they call Dr. Ina. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. But sorry, bro, uh, Dr. Uh, I'm I will not ready. Uh, I'm not already doctor. Just uh, get I just get. But busy. but it's okay. Uh, I'll keep on saying it. It's my prayer for you. Hopefully. Amin. Amin. Ya Rabbal Alamin. <laughs> Thank you, Prof. You are, you are completing your PhD soon. Um, I'm just want to continue my study. Maybe in next year. Okay. Okay. If, uh, okay. So if all I, the best. I get a permit from my husband, and I get allowed to continue. Okay. So may may all be is for you, yeah. Yeah. I mean. Thank you, Prof. Uh, okay. so, uh, there is uh some uh some slides that you uh have been shared. So I we have to time the question and answer, uh question and answer time. So anyone who rise up, raise hand. The people in here, Santa Marisa, you wanna ask something? Santa Marisa is a student. No, Aishifa, you <laughs> want to ask the questions, Aishifa? As we know, it's so different between uh, major difference between in Indonesia and Malaysia countries. Yes, yes. Because you are Republic, Republic of Indonesia. Yeah, Republic. And it's, mm. we know that Malaysia monarchy is a more power than, yeah, as you've been said, that the, the e Yogyakarta is yeah. more power. They've been con controlled or by, uh, have been controlled by. Parliament, yeah, is it right? Yes, yes, Parliament, correct. But your, in, your system is more similar to United States of America. Yes, yes. Yeah. So like like us because yeah we we used to be colonized by British so we are attached to UK. Uh, but I have some of my research um that says that we are different from UK actually. Mm -mm. Different. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there any student that, that was in my class? I think last last semester, uh, four of uh you um, university uh, Sumatera Utara came to oh, UIT. I see. Yeah, I see from the ten students who come yeah. to about uh the outbound students, yeah. like um see Ar Arif. Uh, I don't know what his name, Jaslyn. Uh, yes, Jaslyn. Yeah, I remember Jesseline. that. Hmm. But uh, unfortunately, it's not in the class. Yeah, they are not in the class. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Missing them, <laughs> missing them already. Missing them already. Ah, there is uh, Jocelyn in here. I oh, thought that I, I thought that I can visit yes, you there, uh, Jocelyn. I'm here. Yes, doctor. <laughs> How doctor. are you, Jocelyn? We haven't had the chance to eat together. I, 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 I was thinking to to bring you somewhere to eat. We had yeah. no chance doing that, yeah. <laughs> nice meeting you again, Jocelyn. Maybe I'll be visiting you in Medan. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, so we can discuss yeah, the research as well. So. Yeah, yeah we are uh, just uh, we can uh we can uh get the insight, Mary, more insight when we are uh meeting not online but offline. It would be important. Yes, yes, correct. Sometimes uh, I, I do have some invitation from Universitas Ailangar. So oh, um, I then, then uh, last year, last two years oh, last before year. COVID. Year. Yeah, and then uh, I was there for five days. So five days, uh, we managed to produce paper to be published oh. in uh, Scopus. So that can Scopus. be done. Lah. Mm. Oh, good. That will be some of the research activity that that can be done. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. It's so, so... How we can yeah. meet soon again? 
Yes, Jaslyn, you miss Malaysia? What you miss most? Yes, of course. <laughs> roti, roti canai? <laughs> Nasi kandar. <laughs> Nasi kandar. <laughs> Yeah, asyik kandar. Uh, Dr. Siti, have you been to Malaysia? Uh, I've been because my uh, sister-in-law is in Malaysia. Uh, oh, which part of Malaysia? In, 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 in every year, I have I have to go because I have to face my, mm. my sister-in-law. But uh, okay. in, uh, he lives in, in city. She works in TikTok. Oh, okay. Kuala Lumpur in KL? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Kuala I Lumpur. Yeah. Okay. In city, you work in a uh, little apartment. So uh, we have to meet. And sometimes I have a holiday to, to there. Okay, I see. Okay. Is there any of your but, other uh, friends, Jaslyn, in the class? No, it's only yeah. you. Uh, I have friends in this, uh, Ari. Oh, Ari. Ari, uh, Ari were in my class before? Oh no! From my okay. class, oh no! Okay. Another Talk class. Hi. Yeah. Okay, Ari. But you attended another class, kan? I remember you. Ah uh, yes. During uh, the... with Uner. Yeah. With we have. Yeah. Uner. Yeah. Yes. 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 We have Jamon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fun thing about uh, I think um, being student there, we have lots of makan makan time. Yeah. <laughs> like to makan. So. Uh, uh, any others who have a brief question for the national law from uh, in Malaysia? As we know, yeah. as we know Malaysia and Malaysia are two distinct countries. They each country has a unique national character, legal traditions, history, religious, ethnic, demographic, cultural practice, and yes. Yes. Uh, some uh, uh, difference uh, value exists between Indonesia, maybe. Uh, majority Malaysia is uh, uh, is about the what what we call that monarchy yeah, yeah the monarchy this mostly yeah yeah so it's the monarch now we have new um monarch yang Pertuan Agong monarch. has been appointed uh, so in, by 1st of January 2024 it's going mm -hmm. to be uh, the new monarch okay right mm -hmm. any others who uh, who has to have give, giving questions maybe there's from the students because it's evening yeah I think the yeah, students are yes. so tired uh, I think I, we faces the same problem here if the evening class, then the student wouldn't have energy to ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> so don't uh don't don't worry. We have three meetings. I think this is the yes, first yes, meeting. Yes, yes, yes. Continue and uh, maybe Miss Leslie have been uh explained about the meetings. Yeah. So it's going to be the same student. Yes, because they're okay. from the constitutional law. So we'll be continue the materials maybe. Yeah, so I'll be sharing another material for the Friday class. I think Friday we have another class. Morning. Okay. Uh, I, I will be uh, discussed uh, with the students and meet with okay. uh, and a lecture because uh, is there any schedule for the this uh, lecturing? Uh, so okay. uh, from this uh, or your presentation, is there a legal process? Uh, when as we know that concessional have been a uh, situation uh, is it have been a problem with the country concerned with the legal process like a concessional law yes yes we we have problem recently especially during uh, emergencies so we declare emergency mm -hmm. uh, due to covid in 2021 okay uh, the declaration um okay there is um, there is debates on whether the Yang Dipertuan Agong, our monarch, has an absolute power to declare emergency. Because okay. that declaration was made by him solely without advice. In 2021. Okay, without advice anything. But some would say the debates are, one side says that our Yang Dipertuan Agong is a mm -hmm. constitutional monarchy, so he cannot simply declare emergency. He must mm -hmm. act on advice. But okay, the other okay. side, we have another team that uh, argue to this statement. He says that, no, our monarch 
have an absolute power, especially when it comes to national security. So uh, during COVID, our national security was threatened. So um, the Yang Di Pertuan Agong as guardian of the people. So he should uh, make sure that uh, the, the, his people is safe. So he does not need to act on advice. He has the absolute power. If he thinks it's necessary to declare emergency, he can declare emergency. Of course, he refers to some of the advices, lah, but it's not compulsory for him to follow. Because previous year in 2020, uh, the Prime Minister did submit advice. So that means the declarations of emergency originally uh, comes from the advice of the Prime Minister in September 2020. But uh, the Yang the Pertuan Agong decided not to follow. So there was a controversy. Decided not to follow? Not to so follow. <laughs> yeah, he thinks that. Because so emergency... any chaos? Anything chaos? At the end, uh, no, nothing else. And then the, the, the court says that uh, it, it is the, the prerogative powers of Agong. So Agong can declare emergency without mm -hmm. advice. Mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. Uh, maybe one student will have raised up Arigazi. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, Ari. Okay, thank you, uh, doctor, for the opportunity yes. to asking. First of all, my okay. name is Ari Gazi. I also a uh, exchange student to UATM okay. last semester, but I joined the Malaysian Legal System class with Prof Tungku Intan. Uh, okay. So, uh, my question is that previously you said that uh, there is what like uh one twenty days or like four months. Uh, the Malaysian will not have a parliamentary because of the dissolution of parliamentary, and Malaysia will be ruled by Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Uh, so my question in is uh, so in here is Yang Di Pertuan Agong will have a power of a legislative and could make legislation during these four months. That is, thank you. Okay, I think Ari is the one who can sing. You are uh, the one who can sing with good voice, right? Uh, yes. Am I right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I think he was the artist. That sings for us in the imagination. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Ari, during the dissolutions of parliament, where we do not have our parliament or government, Agong uh, do not have power. What we have to replace the government is what is termed as caretaker of government. So, temporarily, while waiting for the formations of the new government, the caretaker will be taking over uh, the government uh, temporarily. But the power is very limited. So in terms of passing or introducing new laws, uh, the Katika government cannot do that. They do not have power to introduce new laws. Neither do our Yang Di Pertuan Agong. So the Agong do not have power to introduce the law because the constitution says that Agong can only give assent. So the law need to be debated in parliament first. So although we do not have a government, Agong cannot pass laws. So did I answer the, yeah, the questions, Ari? Yes, it's answered. Thank you. Okay. Sing to me one line. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the writing. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, anyone who giving a question for Dr. Nor, Nor in, doc, for Dr. Ina? Ina. <laughs> Dr. Ina. Yeah. Any more questions? Anyone? Okay, you can you, you can also okay. have the questions during our next meeting. Uh, so you okay. re, uh, you just uh, prepare the, the questions so you can ask again uh, and our next meeting. It will be. Yeah. Yes. Maybe uh, in the next two meetings, you have to uh, yes. one question everyone in here. So <laughs> everyone. Can... <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, 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 if. <laughs> then I have 89 questions to answer. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh I uh not 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 compulsory. Oblig obligation. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> compulsory in law uh, in legal English, in compulsory, not obligation, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, uh, it's time to end up our our guest lecture today because uh, in Malaysia have we uh, having Maghrib times in Indonesia it goes to the Maghrib times on too. So nice to meet you, Dr. Ina. Yes, so, nice meeting. So insightful information for us because as we know that uh, uh, there is a difference between Indonesia and Malaysia as we know that the regulations the, and uh, Indonesia republics and Malaysia in parliamentary and uh, maybe 
uh, in the next two meetings we have a uh, more insightful for the uh, constitutional law. Okay. Uh, okay, it's an up today for today. Maybe we have to uh, we have to uh, appointment for the next meeting for okay. all, uh, for all, all all meetings. So thank you for uh, for participation to all the student and Dr. Ina. Uh, yep. I hope I hope all the participants get healthy and successful and anything. Okay, okay, thank you everyone. Thank Assalamualaikum you so warahmatullahi okay. wabarakatuh. Bye bye Jasleen. Bye bye Ari. Bye bye, bye, -bye Dr. Ina. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.